All right, let's go into this. As I mentioned at the top of the program, uh, President Biden is now calling on Congress to come up with with different ways, restrictions uh, to go after bank presidents, uh, various heads of banks uh, because of their lack as the president uh, is is painting it. Uh, it's all their fault that we're seeing some uh, bank failures. And certainly there may be a degree of responsibility there, but the problems that are contributing to these closures are much wider and much broader than just the executives in the banks. Well, we are now watching uh, some big banks, uh, such as Bank of America, uh, Citigroup, J.P. Morgan, Chase, Wells Fargo, and others come to the rescue uh, to the tune of some $5 billion each. So there's some somewhere in the ballpark of now $30 billion uh, coming to the rescue. Well, we want to dive more into this. What is the situation with our banks? And what is this going to mean to an already volatile uh, economy? Well, joining me now to discuss this and more is U.S. Congressman Ralph Norman. He serves on uh, three different House committees, one of which is the Financial Services and Budget Committee. He represents the 5th Congressional District in South Carolina. Congressman Norman, thank you for joining me on Washington Watch. Great to see you again. Well, Jody, great to be with you. We, we miss you up here in D.C. Well, listen, I miss you as well, and uh, you are a dear, dear friend, and it's great to have you on the program. I'm, I'm so grateful that you are serving on some of these extremely important committees right now. Uh, first of all, just uh, give me some your overall thoughts. What in the world is happening with our banks across the country right now? Well, as we've seen, Jody, the you know S S V B Bank, S V B Bank was over two hundred billion failed. The Signature Bank assets had that had assets over one hundred one hundred ten billion have failed. It was largely on these two banks. It was apparently, from what we know by now, they had just made investments uh, in fixed mortgage-backed securities and fixed-term as uh, bar contributing to fixed assets, and they didn't have the equity to pay it back when the run on the bank came uh, for forty-two billion dollars. So uh, it's tied to the interest rates. It's tied to. Uh, what in their minds, the executives' minds, they, it was a uh, a uh, trying to get bigger returns on the investment, uh, and it just didn't work out because run on the bank is uh, is a issue that a lot of banks are facing. But they typically uh, they have me measures that will let them prevent that. On these, they did not. Uh, it could be more. A lot of it, I think, Jody, is on the economy. Uh, interest rates, as you know, have gone up. Uh, the economy is not doing well with inflation, and people are uneasy anyway. With these failures, it'll even be more so uh, with the bank, because the banks are supposed to be one of your secure uh, areas that you can put your money, and it just hadn't been the case. Well, I, I agree with you. I think there's, uh, you know, we haven't seen a run on banks in a long time, and this certainly is creating a lot of uneasiness, uh, rightfully so. Uh, within the hearts of many, many people. But to point the finger and say it's only the executives of the bank's fault, I, I, I agree with you. This is a broader issue. What do you think about the president coming out and more or less pointing the finger at the executives, the bank CEOs and so forth, and say we need more restrictions on them? Uh, is that the right way to go? It's par for the course. I mean, that's what he does. You know, if you remember when gas prices went up, it was Putin's fault. He always looks for for blame. Uh, I think he has to look uh, toward his policies. Look at the Green New Deal policies, the woke policies that he's uh, making banks or uh, highly encouraging banks to to participate in. SVC, I understand, had over five billion in in uh, Green New Deal related uh, investments, which aren't doing well. If you look at their stocks, they're not that uh, people would put them in a lot of other places rather than green, uh, the Green New Deal stocks. And um, but it's his policies. And I really think he's clueless. I don't think he knows what to do. Uh, these banks that uh, we're bailing out now under the systemic uh, designation uh, is, you know, he's setting a precedent. I don't think he can withstand because you're going to bail these banks out. You're going to bail every bank out that has problems like this. And this is what the FDIC is the insurance is for. 
And uh, but he's uh, jumped to the, these conclusions, and it doesn't shock me. That he's blaming the the CEOs. Yeah, and you know, even the FDIC is that money is coming from somewhere. And if you start having runs on banks across the the whole country. Uh, this is going to be extremely problematic. I, I saw yesterday that uh, the, uh, Secretary Yellen was at a, a Senate hearing, and even there, there was a lot of disturbing information that came out. Everything were from uh, China is actually going to be paid back for their interests in the banks and, and all this sort of stuff. But at the same time, she was trying to give some degree of reassurance to the American public that their money is safe that banks are safe. What was your take on her comments in the hearing yesterday? The same as when Joe Biden talks, his words are meaningless. I think uh, Janet Yellen's words are meaningless. I don't think, you know, she was, if you listen to her, she was having to read this. And, um, you know, I don't know what, how, what, how she's basing that. I mean, we've got major banks that are failing. And for one reason or another, they're pointing the finger and saying things are secure. Well, they're not. Now, hopefully more banks won't face this type problem. But uh, this this goes back, again, to the economy, to people feeling Ill, Ill at ease. They take their pay is less. Uh, and the ability to borrow money, make loan payments is far less than what it was two years ago. So um, I don't know where she's basing that, but I don't know why she was in Ukraine doling out our money uh, as she did uh, a week or so ago. So it's all, uh, to me, just words. Well, you bring up a whole lot more questions. I wish we had time to dive into some of those even further. But if I can, Ralph, I'd like to switch gears a little bit because I know this is also a topic that you've been very heavily involved with. Uh, for a long, long time. But yesterday, the uh, uh, Committee on Homeland Security had a meeting down at the border, a hearing down at the border. And yet again, Democrats, uh, if you will, protested that and didn't show up for it. But uh, we have the uh, DHS Secretary Mayorkas, who testified a year ago or so, uh, months ago, that the border was operationally secure. And of course, we know that it's not at this point. Uh, let me let me run a clip for you. I'd like to get your feedback on this. Uh, if we can hit the Mayorkas and the Ortiz clip back to back, please. Will you testify under oath right now? Do we have operational control, yes or no? Yes, we do. And we have we operational are... control of the borders. Yes, we do. And You heard the secretary. He said we have operational control. That's the definition and of operational control. Based upon the control. definition you have, sir, up there, no. We don't have operational control. No, sir. Wow. I mean, this is serious stuff here. Here, here we have uh, Secretary Mayorka saying, yes, we have operational control at the at the southern border. Uh, and the border chief who is there working says, oh, no, we are nowhere close to operational control. What's your take on this? Well, you know, if you look at the definition, Jody, and, you know, if, if for it to be operationally secure, uh, you know, have an operational control, it means you prevent all unlawful entries into the United States, uh, entry by terrorists, aliens, uh, narcotics, contraband. And we know that's not the case. I've been to the border, as you have. There have been 4.6 million encounters since this president took office, a million in the last five months that we know of. Uh, but until the wall is built, and, and by the way, for, for your viewers, we're paying an estimated 130000 per day, uh, which is around $50 million per year to store the steel and the materials that have already been paid for. Uh, we're paying that to the, to the property owners. And while it just sits there, and until you have designated points of entry and a wall, and he, you know, you're not going to have any type of uh, security. Mayorkas, when I was on the on the uh, oversight committee, told when I asked him, "Is a border secure?" He said, "Yes." Then I said, well, "Define unsecured," and it was like a deer in headlights. So they have no credibility. And the sad part about it, to unwind this for hopefully the next uh, president, uh, Republican president that comes in to unwind it, I don't know how you do that. You know, we're we've got two more years of this. And at this rate, we will have 10 to 15 million illegals in this country uh, ballooning the budgets of every city and every municipality in America, which is sad. It's unbelievable. 
Congressman Ralph Norman from South Carolina, uh, dear friends, always great seeing you. Thank you for your work, your leadership in Congress. Keep the torch ablaze, my friend. Thank you for joining us this evening on Washington Watch. My pleasure. Thank you, Jody.